What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be changing out the studs in the Mustang. I'm going to be changing out the studs in the Mustang because in a previous video, I showed you guys that two of the five studs were broken on one of the wheels. And since it's such an old car, I thought might as well change out all 20. <laughs> so this is what I got to prepare for this job. I got one of these wheel stud installers. That's to make the studs go inside the hub. I got 20 of these studs and I got lug nuts. Another thing that I did get was cotter pins. I think this will be needed for the front end. So I just bought it in case. So let's get to installing all of these. To start this process off, I'm going to lift up the Mustang by the differential and then leave some jack stands near the wheels just in case. You're going to have to raise the car because in order to put in the studs, you might have to rotate the wheel just so you can get the studs out. So here we go. Also when you start this, you want to put something to stop the car from rolling forward. I'm going to be taking off the rims to get to the studs. Cheapy lug nuts. Now that we're at this point, all you have to do is take out the drum brake and how you do that is you just pull on it, pull it back and forth and it should come off like that. So drum brakes are a little different looking than disc brakes and I think most cars nowadays use disc brakes. Okay, so the reason why I'm lifting the whole rear end up is because if I need to turn this and it's lifted up, I'm able to turn it with my hand and the reason why I want to be able to turn it is because if I hit these out, I don't want to hit against something that's important. So I need enough space for this to pop out on this end. Alright, there's all five. So now I'm going to be putting in the new ones and the way I'm going to be doing that is putting it from the back side inwards. Like that. So what you have to do is you have to push these all the way in so that it's flush with this portion. I'll show you guys the process to do that with the tool I bought. This is the tool. To use this tool, what you do is you put it on top of the stud and then you're supposed to put the lug nut so that it goes like that on top of the stud. And then as you're twisting it, this rotates so that it makes the stud zip flush. That. So I'm going to just use one of the old lug nuts and then put it in. And it should line up perfectly. At this point, you're going to have to tighten this and then you can do that with power tools, you could do it with air tools or you can even do it with the socket wrench. You have to make the stud flush to the wheel bearing. So I was trying to use this power tool, but I don't think it's strong enough or it's just gonna take a really long time. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it with a breaker bar. To use a breaker bar, we're gonna have to put the other side on the ground. That way this doesn't spin and I'm able to use a breaker bar to pull this outwards. Now that I've torqued this completely down, this is how it should sit. This bottom portion of the stud is completely flush to this portion, so that this is how it should be. Four more on this side, and then it should be complete. <sighs> Southern California is getting warm. Now for the stop wheels. 90 pounds. All 
All right guys, so it's actually the next day and I stopped working yesterday because it got way too hot and I was getting a little dizzy. So let's get on to the next side and here you go. I'll show you guys the condition of the studs of how they came when I bought the car. So if you look at that, wow, that is in horrible condition. That's why only three of the five lug nuts are in place. So let's fix that right now. Now to take off the drum. Remember, all you have to do is wiggle it back and forth. If it doesn't budge, try smacking it with the hammer or mallet. All right, there it goes. So now I'm going to smack these out of place and then I'm gonna put in the new studs and then I'll show you guys how it looks afterwards. All right, so if you look at it right here, you can tell that it was only seated up to here and that is rarely dangerous. And then that's all five studs taken out. So now I'm gonna put in the new studs and hopefully do a better job than one of the previous owners. All right, so what I'm going to have to do is use this electric impact driver and seat it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna have to take a breaker bar and seat it completely because the way it is now, it's like this much off from being seated. And yeah, I wanna seat it completely to make car safe to drive. So for now, I'm going to put in all five. Now I'm going to use a breaker bar so that all five of these are completely tightened and put in correctly. As you can see, this is a brand new lug nut and I bought 40 lug nuts just in case. And I'm glad I did because you will probably be using a couple of the new lug nuts just to tighten the studs in. It's better to use the brand new ones because you don't want to mess up the thread. And that's what I learned from the other wheel. So always buy an extra couple of lug nuts. Okay, to show you guys again, this is how much space there should be when the stud is fully placed. If you look at this one, even with the electric impact driver, it was only able to pull it out that much. So if you look in the back, you see this one, it's completely flat and this is how it should look. If you look at this one, you see that huge gap right there? That's not how it should be. So this is what I'm doing to pull these forward. This tool makes it so much easier for stud placement. So it should be tightening right here. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to be working on the fronts and the fronts are a little bit more complicated than the rears. The rears, all you'd have to do is take out the drum and then knock out the studs. But in the front, I'm gonna have to do the same, but the front has cotter pins and nuts that I'm gonna have to take off. So I'll show you guys how to do that and let's get started on that. To make this even worse, there's a spacer on it and the lug nuts were probably on by about four threads, which is completely not safe. So I'm glad I'm getting this done. Okay. And that should do it. So to take this off, you have to bash this out pretty much from the edges because it looks like that does have that little divot right there so you have to hit in between that to make enough leverage to be able to pull this out so there's a bunch of grease that's not a bad thing that's how it should be to have this bearing in good shape okay so within this mess there should be a cotter pin but it's not even a cotter pin that they put in it's actually a nail that's bent inwards and that's pretty shoddy mechanical work done by this previous owner. Okay. All right, so here's the nail that was used as a cotter pin. Cotter pins are these things, which I bought offline. It's one piece of metal that's bent inwards and then it has a little loop at the end. So what you have to do is uh, stick it through the hole that it's supposed to go in 
and then bend it outwards so it holds whatever in place. Then there's this nut, kind of has ridges on the top. This is what the car pin is supposed to hold in. Pull that out. Pull this piece out as well. Looks like that. Now I should be able to take this out. All right, there we go. And this is how the front drum brakes look. So all I have to do is knock it out from the front and those are the five. So this process is a little bit easier. All right, so this is on the floor. I'm just gonna smack these in. Then I'll be able to replace all five of these studs. Okay, so a little bit of change in location. I'm gonna put it on top of two two by fours and I feel like that'll make it a little bit easier for me to hit out the two studs. All right, so I didn't know, but this actually comes out. That's why this part wasn't coming out. So now that I think about it, I'm probably just gonna put the studs in first and then put it into this drum. If you look at it, that actually put it in all the way. So it looks like I could just use the electric impact to put in all five. This is pretty much complete. Now I'm gonna put it back into the drum. Right now, it's fully in. So I'm gonna put this back and put everything back to how it was, and hopefully that'll make it work. So put this back in. Okay. Now I'm gonna put the things back in order. This piece back in first. And the cover. Ah, there's a groove. So much oil that I can't even tell. Okay, so. I could find that groove. There it is. So that goes in like that. Then I'm gonna put this in. The star, or the sun shaped nut. once it's in far enough there is a hole somewhere on two sides so that this nut holds the whole assembly in place so let me find it it's right there right there at this point I'm going to use a cotter pin to hold this in place not a nail So at this point, I'm just going to wrap this around. All right, and this isn't going to go anywhere. So at this point, I can just close this off. So that's how you do a front stud replacement on an old Mustang. Last wheel. Last part. Finally done! <laughs> Finally finished installing all 20 studs on the Mustang and I'd say this is one of the harder jobs that you could take on if you plan to do it yourself. If you have a whole day free, I'd say go for it and try it because by doing this, I feel a little bit more accomplished and I feel like I can do a lot more to the Mustang and make it my own car that I pretty much built from the ground up. There are going to be a couple more mods like right here. There is a grill that fits in between this space and I'll probably install that pretty soon. The mods being probably a Monte Carlo bar, which stabilizes the front end of the Mustang. And I'm probably going to fix the fuel lines that are leaking gas. I finally figured out what was wrong with the Mustang when it was leaking gas to the sides. And I'm probably gonna get that fixed by buying a couple of rubber hoses. I do have a lot planned for the Mustang, but 
I also have a couple things planned for the Evo. For the Evo, I'm probably going to be doing stainless steel brake lines pretty soon, so you guys can definitely look forward to that. If you guys plan on doing it yourselves, I'll show you guys how to do it while learning how to do it myself. So don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Later!